Air Branch patrols 365 miles along the U.S.-Mexico border. We're along the border here, but dude, you're not seeing the boundary fence. You can see it start coming back up over here. We spent a day with Customs and Border Protection Agent Johnson in an A-Star helicopter looking for drug smugglers. Uh, it's, it's mostly the, uh, the marijuana because the, uh, the, the smaller volume, higher, higher value drugs are more easily moved in uh, compartments, in compartments and cars and stuff like that. We're just about 90 miles west of Tucson and this mountain range here is patrolled by the Ajo Station and this area is some of the most highly trafficked for marijuana smuggling. can't quantify because we can't see everything all the time. Human smuggling also big business. There's a lot of activity that happens right here. Right under the watchful eye of powerful cartels. The cartel controls everything. There used to be a time a few years ago when I got here where people were pretty much crossing at will, some without camouflage. Well, Johnson says not anymore. Now ranches and barns serve as staging grounds for people to meet their cartel employed escorts. They carry backpacks that have clothes that they will eventually change into so that they don't look like they just got out of the desert smuggling in. And then the trek over mountains through washes and across scorching desert begins. But you can see if there's a low spot here. They're gonna, they're probably gonna come up through there. And stopping that movement is a tough fight against an invisible enemy. They're gonna hear you coming and they are gonna stop moving and they're gonna hug up on the base of a tree or get under cover and they will literally disappear. Between camouflage, carpet-covered booties, and even scuba gear used to get through washes, Johnson says smugglers get creative to go undetected. They have incredible resources. They move their operation. They pay for whatever they need to make things happen. And nearly every day, Agent Johnson is called out to help stop those things from happening. Well, we had a group of six to seven. We just got a call from agents on the ground who are tracking seven people on foot, and now we're just two minutes away. Zero three three copy. They think it's smuggling traffic. Three two nine. Uh, are you uh, are you in the purgatory wash here? The unusually full wash and thick brush are making it tough for the agents on dirt bikes. It would be fairly obvious where you know six or seven guys were trampling through the mud. Are, they, are these guys on carpet? Yeah, they're on carpet. I'm on them. Our presence alone may be enough to cause those guys to uh, drop contraband if that's what they're doing, or it may just disperse. Maybe you fly the south side of this wash, a little to the east or west. Maybe they saw this and decided to lay up for a while. Well, I was right there, but I'm not seeing them in the mud now. I'm having a hard time picking them up again. Successfully finding every smuggler, of course, is an impossible task. Oh, hi, this is me. I stopped my bike right here earlier. Good eye, though. One we had to leave to ground agents today. Comes up, we'll dash back. Good luck. Stay safe. Hey, Oma, thank you very much for coming out. Appreciate it. Agent Johnson says limited time and resources make for days like this, and some of these operations are just distractions for bigger drug smuggling happening elsewhere. You're, you're looking over here, and they're moving bigger and greater things somewhere else. But that won't stop agents from tracking down every footprint they can trace if it means one less pound of drugs entering the U.S. You know, just because you can cross doesn't mean you're in. Alexa Liako, KGUN 9, on your side.